welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to attach an object to a socket so that way the object will follow through with an animation. We're going to be representing that with a sword and a slicing movement so that way we can create a melee attack. This tutorial is going to be multiple parts. This video is covering sockets and animations, and the next video will be covering how to handle the damage given from the sword. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. The first thing that we're going to be doing is importing our arms and our sword. I got both of these models off of Open Game Art. I'll provide their links in the description below. The only thing that I did was create the animation for the sword slicing, and if you need a video on how to create your animations inside of Blender and export them for Unreal, I'll provide the link to ours in the description below. But I'm going to go ahead and import the arms as well as their animation. So you want to make sure that you have import animations checked for your arms and slicing, and then for these arms from open game art, they're positioned differently than I need them, so I make sure to have the import rotation at 90 in the Z, so that way they're facing forward. So I'm going to go ahead and import these, and then now I need to import my sword. And the only thing that I'm changing from the defaults with the sword is the sword was rather large, so I wanted to change the uniform scale to 0.1. And that's everything we're importing, so I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And then I want to create an action mapping for slicing. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Input. I'm going to add a new action mapping, and I'm going to name this Slicing. And I'm going to map it to my left mouse button. And the reason I'm doing an action mapping instead of an axis mapping is because an action mapping returns a true or a false. In other words, is our left mouse button pressed or not? Whereas an axis mapping returns a ranged value. So in other words, if you had a joystick, you want to know how far that joystick is being pressed in a specific direction. So now that we've done that, we can go back to the scene. And I'm going to go over to my C++ scripts. And I'm going to open up my character. You can use whatever character controller you have. If you have your own, you don't need any of the previous code that I've created for this. If you're in need of a character controller, our previous tutorial covered that, and I'll provide a link for that tutorial as well. But again, none of the code inside of those videos is needed for this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is create our functions and properties. We're going to have one function and two properties. The function is going to be a void attack. And this function is what we're going to tie to our left mouse click, so that way it's called anytime the user gives that input. And then our two properties are going to be for our sword object and then our slicing animation. So we'll go ahead and start with the sword. We're going to do U property, and we want to do edit anywhere. And this edit anywhere allows us to assign the properties value inside of the details panel so that way we can take a sword that's in the scene and assign it to our property in the script. I'm also going to give it a category and I'm going to make it equal to animation. You can name it whatever you feel is best. The purpose of the category is so you can group things together inside of your details and better organize things. And again this property is going to be our sword so it's going to be a pointer to an actor that we're calling sword. The next property is going to be our animation and it's going to look fairly similar so it's going to be U property. Again edit anywhere because we want to be able to specify the animation that we want inside of our details panel and then we're going to do category equals animation so that way both of these properties will be in the same section inside of our details panel. And this is going to be a pointer to our slicing animation, so it's uanim sequence, and we're just going to call it slice. And now that we're done with that, we can go over to our CPP. And we're going to be doing three things inside this. We're going to be attaching our sword to our socket, we're going to be binding our slicing action map to our attack function, and we're going to be creating our attack function. So we'll go ahead and start with attaching the sword to our socket. So we can go ahead and go down to begin play, 
And before we even attach it, we want to make sure that the sword exists so that way we don't get any null pointers. And this just protects you for if you forgot to specify the sword inside your details panel after you compile and play, so that way you don't get a null error and crash Unreal. Now we're going to attach this to our socket, so we're going to do sword attach to component. The way we're going to specify that we want a socket is we first need to get the mesh that the socket's on. In this case, it's going to be the mesh of our character, so we're just going to do get mesh. And then we have to set the way it's going to attach, so this is F attachment transform rules. And the transform rule that we're going to be using is snap to target, not including scale. And all of this says is we want to take the pivot point of our sword we're going to snap that pivot point to the socket, which is our target, so that way the sword is attached to that socket, and we're saying that the scale of the socket isn't relevant to the scale of the sword. And then finally, we need to specify the socket that we're attaching it to, so in this case, we're going to do F name, and we haven't actually created the socket, so we just need to make sure that whatever we put here is the same name that we end up giving the socket after we've created the script, so I'm going to call it sword socket. You can call this whatever you would like, you just need to make sure that this F name matches what you end up naming your socket. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we can go ahead and scroll down to our inputs where we'll bind our slicing mapping. So for this, it's input component, bind action. And this first argument is the mapping name that we put inside of our project settings, so we called it slicing. And then since this is an action, we need to specify the key event. We want this action to take place whenever we press, so we're going to do IE pressed. And then we want to say what we're binding this to, so we can go ahead and do this. And then we want to specify the function that we're binding to this slicing mapping, which we have attached to our left mouse button. And that is going to be a my character attack. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and actually create the attack function. And it was void. And then a my character attack. And all that we're going to be doing inside here is getting and calling our slice animation. So again, we want to make sure that there isn't a void error that can be called. So we want to make sure that slice exists. And if it does, then we want to go ahead and set and play this animation. So the first thing we need to do is specify on which mesh the animation is taking place. In this case, it's our arms. So we can go ahead and get this mesh. And then we want to set the animation to slice. And this is just telling Unreal the animation that's going to be called for this mesh is the slice animation. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and again get our mesh that the animation is taking place on, which is this mesh, and then we can play this animation. Again, we want to specify it's the slice one, and then this actually has two arguments, the animation and then whether this animation is looping or not, and in our case it isn't looping, so we can go ahead and put false there. We want this animation to play once per click and not loop after the first click. And that is all of the coding we'll be doing for this tutorial, so we can go ahead and go back to the scene and compile. And while this compiles, I'll take this time to tell you about our new game, Blast Off. You can download it at the Play Store. I'll provide a link in the description below, or you can go to your Play Store on your phone and type in Blast Off to find it there. It's a 2D distance game with rockets. As you progress through the game, you get more currency, so you can buy more rockets and go higher into the atmosphere. It's free to play, so if you'd like to support us in that way, we'd greatly appreciate it. And again, the link will be in the description below, or you can go to your Play Store, type in Blast Off, and find the one that has the icon that looks like what's on the screen. And now that the compile is completed, we can go ahead and start dragging our things into the scene. So we'll start with my character, and then we can go back to our content, and we can drag in our sword. And with the sword, we want to make sure two things are checked. We want it to be movable and not static. If it's not movable, then it won't attach to the socket. And the other thing we want to make sure is that there's no collision. If you don't set it to no collision, then it's going to end up colliding with the arms and messing things up. 
So now that we've done that for the sword, we can go ahead and start assigning things to my character. And what we're going to want to do is go to the animation category and give it our sword. And then we want to specify the animation, which is our slicing animation. And then we also want to give it the skeletal mesh, which is our sword attack. And this is what we're actually going to be attaching the socket to. So you can go ahead and double click on that skeletal mesh. And then as you can see, we have our arms and all of our bones listed. You want to make sure that your skeleton tree is open, and then you want to find the bone that you want to add a socket to. I'm going to add mine to my palm middle. So you're going to right click, add socket, and then again, you want to make sure that your socket is named the same that it was named in the script. So for me, that was sword socket. And then I'm just going to shrink the scale. And then I'm going to go back and right click on my socket and I'm actually going to add a preview, which it will be my sword. And this just allows me to better see how the sword is in relation to the socket once it's attached. So that way I can adjust the socket into the correct positioning for the sword. So I'm just going to adjust the positioning real quick. And now that it's where I feel is most comfortable, I'll just go ahead and save that. And now we can go back to the scene and we can go ahead and test and play. So as you can see, the sword went straight to the socket and whenever I click, the animation plays. So as a recap, we created a socket that we can attach an animation to. In this case, it's our sword. So that way the sword will follow the slicing animation to create a natural looking melee attack. And again, the next video will be covering how to deal damage with the sword. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord and ask them there. The link for that will be in the description below. We do videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream games on Twitch Monday through Thursday and sometimes a full group stream on Fridays. So if you're interested in that, please check out the link in the description below. We've also created a Unity asset pack of kids toys, so if that's something you're interested in or would like to support us in that way, be sure to check out that link in the description below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.